Well, hello my friends, Kevin the Comic Doctor coming to you with another live CGC unboxing. Hello my friends, like I said, I'm Kevin, I'm the Comic Doctor, I'm a comic book presser, I'm also an authorized CGC dealer located way up in Oshawa, Ontario, Canada, and uh, every Tuesday night at 8.30, well, almost every Tuesday night at 8.30, pretty much every Tuesday night at 8.30, Eastern Standard Time, I come on here and I unbox whatever comic books have been returned to me from CGC. Now, are these my comic books? No, no, they're, well, actually, actually that's not true. Today, some of these books, well, one of these books was mine. The operative word being was. Um, and the rest belong to you, my, my awesome clients. And we come on here for a virtual show and tell. If you like comic books, you like comic book artwork, because, you know, comic book covers it is pretty much comic book artwork. And you like talking about fandom and what's going on in the world of co comic book collecting. This is another one of your YouTube locations I hope you'll consider sticking around to. Hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. And of course, by doing so, by hitting that subscribe button, you can join in our live chat, which is going on already right now. Uh, when my stack gets high, I'm going to showcase these comics. As my stack gets high, I pause, I go over to the chat room, I say hello to whoever's here, and answer any questions you might have pertaining to this crazy hobby we all love so much. Okay, guys, let's see what we got here. We start off with a banger. A banger. And I'm going to admit, I... Um, I'm going to admit, I uh, I did open this box because a few of these books, like I said, were mine. And I I took a couple to the shop and I forgot to bring them back. So I'll tell you what books, other books are here. But let's start off with this one right here. I said it was mine because it was mine. It no longer is mine. You may have seen this guy on, um, on my uh, Instagram feed as being sold. It sold really quickly. I picked this book up. This one has quite the story, actually. This comic book uh, I picked up locally. Um, I thought it was going to come back a two or a two five and I did my work on it. it turned out pretty good. It had some damage, you know, over here and it had some chipping on the top here that I repaired with some, with some acid free, uh, tape. And I sent it in quite quickly to get it back, try to get it back before Christmas. Well, it came back before Christmas and it came back restored. <laughs> I'm like, what? And I was livid. I said, how the heck? What do you mean restore? I, I went through this book with a fine tooth comb. There's no way there's any restoration on this book. But according to CGC, there was a, uh, um, there was, there was a, um, a tear seal. Now, tear seals are kind of the best restoration to have because they're easily reversed. So, but I, I was livid. I said, there's no way that this book, this beautiful, amazing Spider-Man number one had a tear seal. Anyhow, I kind of bitched and complained a bit. Maybe I should have shut my mouth because when I got it back, I decided to crack it open, and I did. And I have the original, ah, where is it? Right over here somewhere. There it is. I have the original uh, restored grade right there. A waste of 300 or so, $400 to grade it. Uh, it came back restored. I cracked it, and sure enough, right beside, I mentioned I fixed a chip in here. Right beside a chip I fixed, there was a tear seal. What a bozo. I, I, I felt so foolish. And I, I contacted CGC because I kind of was mm, a little bit abrupt. I'll say that. I, the comic doctor was abrupt. And so I contacted him and apologized because, yeah, there was a tear seal. It was very minor. I fixed it in like under three minutes, wrapped it back up, sent it back in. And I was very happy, though. I thought it might go down to a 2.5, but it remained a 3, which was fantastic. It's a wonderful, wonderful, great uh, entry-level copy. Uh, and there she is. You know, anyways, like I said, it is sold. It belongs to someone else now. It's going to the new home very soon. So Spider-Man, number one. Oh, and the other two books that I had, and they're not here, uh, and they are for sale, actually, if you're looking for one. I have an Amazing Spider-Man 16 with the Daredevil, and that's a 6.5. And I also have a uh, Amazing Spider-Man uh, 20, uh, first appearance of the Scorpion, which I'm contemplating I may keep. And that's at a 5 Five zero or five five? I can't remember. I have a picture. Actually, I can look right here. I got a picture on my phone. I'll tell you exactly the grades. Um, right there, five zero. And there it is. There's the. Uh, whoop, yeah. Can you see this? There's the uh, ASM twenty, and might as well show you the really nice sharp co uh, copy of ASM sixteen. Those are both available at the shop for sale. So if you're interested in any of those two books, give me a holler and I can give you more details on that. Okay, let's keep going. Next, we have a copy of Ultimate Fallout 4 in a 9 point... I better check these books for cracks. Never forget that, Kevin. Never forget that in a 9.4. 
<laughs> we got an amazing Spider-Man number 300 and a 9.4 as well. Another ultimate fallout. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I see something coming up in a 9.6. Another ultimate fallout for in a 9.6. And we have a really lovely looking amazing Spider-Man number uh, two, 316. I believe this is Frank's book. I'm not a 100% sure. I don't like doing that. Whenever I say that, I get myself in trouble. But I'm pretty sure it is. And the reason I think it's his is because... Frank always goes for these custom labels, more than anybody else I know. But he brought the book to me. If it's the one, he brought this book to me a few weeks ago. He said it had already been pressed. And I said, okay. You know, I was, I was about to pack it up and send it as is. But I said, you know what? I better take a look at this. Took it out, and there were a couple of uh, dimples. Let's call them dimples uh, in the lower area of the book. How do these little dimples happen? When you press a book, if you're not very careful, if you've got any debris or any crumbs of, you know, little particles of uh, eraser, if you don't clean the comic properly and you press it, you basically create little dimples in the book. Uh, and there were two in this book that we, that we eventually just got out. And then we sent the book in. I'm pretty sure this is the book. And I'm glad we did that because it may have come back in 9.6. So happy that the 9.8 is on this book. If it's the book in question, I think it is. We also got a really nice copy of Star Wars number one. Been seeing this book a little more frequently than usual in a 9.4. Okay, my stack is high. I've got about 20, 20 something books. I've got a magazine in there too. So don't go anywhere, guys. Only one box today. Only one box today. I think there's a bunch of box on their boxes on their way back. So we should have more for next Tuesday. So be sure you hit that subscribe button. Let's go over to the chat room and see who is here. Let me go to the uh, big chat window. Boom, right there. All right, Marco is in the house. First one here was Mark. Oh, wait, no, it wasn't the first one. He wasn't the first one. John Sherwin. Hey, John, how's it going? Uh, Treasury's here. How you doing? Brian's in the house too. Astro Lucky's here. Spiro, how's it going, pal? Evening all. Could this be the night I've been patiently waiting for? I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. Uh, Marco, hello. Mar Warren's here. Mike's here. How you doing, Mike Evans? Rocco. Or Rock City says, 12 cent Spider-Man in the vanguard of blue chip. I hope there is more uh, nuance to your question just, uh, despite a question mark in title. I don't know. Uh-oh. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe there is. We'll see. Yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about Spider-Man today. We're going to talk a little bit about, you know, when we're done looking at these books, let's talk about Spider-Man. Is it, the in my experience, in the comic doctor's experience, is that a series, Amazing Spider-Man, the, the, the series that this book right here belongs to, is that a series you should hang your hat in? Should you, could you, should you park your car in the uh, Amazing Spider-Man lot? Because... Well, we'll talk about that later. Should you or should you not? Um, we will talk about that later. Okay, who else is here? We have uh, Astro Lucky says, Doc in the house, I really enjoyed your show last Thursday. Great conversation. I did too. It was great having uh, the 9.9 .9 newsstand in the house. And I really liked the fact, I mean, we had to talk about the, you know, uh, the CGC um, scandal part two. We had to talk about that because it happened that morning. But Initially, what I was going to talk about with him was what got him into comics and that sort of thing. And that's what I really want to do on, on my one-on-one -on -one show is talk to people about uh, their collecting, you know, their, their, their obsession with collecting. And we kind of got into it a little bit with, uh, with him, which was fantastic. Uh, this Thursday, uh, we are talking to Steve Barak. And I'm going to, Steve Barak, and he is, as you know, he's currently working with, um, with uh, Comic Link. But Steve also is, uh, you know... Uh, Oh my gosh, he's a pioneer in this in this comic book collecting world, right? It was him and 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 the, and the uh, efforts of many others that brought us CGC initially, eventually CBCS as well, brought third grade uh, uh, third sorry third party grading to the forefront in our hobby. And we're going to talk to him about that. We're going to talk to him about a variety of things. So, uh, if you're not busy on Thursday night, join me here at eight thirty, uh, where Steve and I will talk about a variety of different things. One thing I really want to tap him on the shoulder about and kind of. Uh, you know, asking questions about is original artwork. You know, if you are thinking about getting into original artwork, you know, I don't know a hell of a lot about it myself. Where do you start? Where's a great place to start? So maybe, hopefully, Steve will answer some of those questions for us. All right, and just I'm putting her away now. So there she is, guys. Say goodbye. Beautiful copy of ASM1. Man, I wish I had money to keep them all, guys. I wish I could just keep them all. All right, what else do we have here? Let's see. Oh. Let's see what else we have. We'll come back to the chat in just a few moments. 
We've got a Hulk 181 and a 4.0. There we go. <clears throat> we have an X-Men number 12. Okay, these belong to Pony. This is Pony's uh, Hulk 181. And Pony also has a really cool copy of X-Men number 12 right here. And this is a really cool book because it's a double cover X-Men number 12. The first cover is a 4.0 and the interior cover is a 6.5. So I don't know if you know this or not, but if you have a double cover book, the interior cover, the grade of the interior cover is the grade we see on the slab. But they do make a note of what the exterior cover's grade is as well. Okay, so anyways, double cover X-Men number 12. Uh, first juggernaut. What else we have here? Oh, nice. We've got a... Oh, I wonder. I wonder, wonder. <laughs> I wonder if this is it. I don't think it is. Wolverine number one and a 9.8 from 1988. We also have... This is a quick return. This is a reholder, I believe. Green Lantern number one. This is a reholder. It has it has si a si ah, spine split seal to cover and glue on spine to cover in a 5.5. Again, it is a it is a uh, restored book. We also have a giant size X-Men number one. And that is in a 6.0 as well. We have a X-Men 137 in a 9.6. We have an X-Men 108. Wow, it's coming up. In a one and a 9.4. And we've got everybody's favorite Taylor Swift cover. We've got an X-Men 130 in a 9.4. There she is right there. Dazzler first appearance. Come on, get on there. And my stack again is pretty high, so I will go back to packing this up and go back to the uh, the chat room. Um, where did I left leave off? I think I left off right about here. Uh, Treasury says beautiful ASM one. Aren't they all though? Aren't those beautiful ASM ones beautiful? They are. They are. Um, TK Junction ASM1 Ode to Dream. Congrats on the new oh, to the new owner. Yes, congrats. I'm not going to mention who it is because maybe he doesn't want. He is a he's a viewer here. I'll tell you that much right now. But I, I don't know if he's here tonight. But I also don't want to make mention of it because maybe he doesn't want to let everybody know. Some people don't want me to show off their books, and when that happens, I don't show off the books. I I, I listen to them and uh, and do as they tell me. But officially, this book is still mine. Right, so I can show it off because it is still officially mine. Still, all right, let's keep going here. What are you guys saying? Uh, Roxy says, Abrupt, terse, dickish is probably a better combo, but that only conveys you have confidence and passion in what you do. And what more can you ask for a guy to clean press your books? I know, but you know what? I got very, I, I, I was very anxious to get the book back. I, I really thought this book was going to come back at two. Or a 2.5. Uh, Did not expect a 3.0. And uh, the weird thing is, I contacted them and I asked before it shipped out. And they're not supposed to tell me the grade, but I was very, very um, convincing to the person on the phone. I said, come on, tell me the grade. I won't get pissed off. And they told me it was a 3. Then I asked them, Universal Blue? And they said, yes. So I was quite happy it was Universal Blue. Then the book arrives and it's purple. So that's what kind of pissed me off because... Had they told me it was it was restored while it was there, I would have just said, okay, don't send it back. Just send it to, over to CCS and have them remove the, uh, the tear seal. But honestly, it probably was cheaper for me to do it myself than to have them do it, come to think of it, right? Uh, Brian says, love the old covers. Artists back then could draw feet. They sure could. 
Marco Coletta says, poor purple label and almost every other art industry restoration isn't a bad thing. Yeah, you know, I see, I watch, um, there's a couple, a few ladies that have this company. They're on, uh, I don't have them on, right, their name handy, but they're on Instagram and they restore like movie posters and art prints. And they're, they're color touching those things like crazy. And it's totally acceptable, right? Um, I guess it just depends, right? I, I guess it just depends. Um, but yeah, you know, if, if you have like a, a, uh, um, not a one sheet, I guess it's a one sheet movie poster when they're folded, oftentimes it breaks color. You see them in there with the special Prisma, pe Prisma pencils and their acrylic paints, you know, color touching. I'm going, oh my God, not, 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 that wouldn't happen in our industry. No way. Uh, Rock City says eraser shavings are usually the culprit. Yeah, usually, usually, um, you gotta be, you know, I'm not the most organized person to be honest, but you really have to be careful when you're pressing your books, your area must be organized and you want to make sure that you dust regularly. Cause even if just a little bit of, um, any, anything, it could be erasers or, or whatever. You just want to keep your area tidy because if you, uh, contaminate the comic before putting it in, you're giving yourself a hell of a lot of work oftentimes to reverse that problem. So better off to just spend a few minutes organizing your, your workstation. There, that, way, that way you can uh, avoid uh, any, any un, unwanted uh, <laughs> problems that you're going to have to fix later down the road. You know, one of the things that drives me crazy sometimes, I use um, like uh, drafting brushes to clean the dust off, but sometimes the hairs from that hasn't happened in a long time, but sometimes the hairs will fall on the comic even after you brush it. And I've pressed those into a book. Well, that's a pain. You got to go back and rehumidify it and fix it. Just more time, right? It sinks. Eyelashes, hairs. It happens. It happens. All right. Let's see what else I have here. Give me one second. Oh, I put, oh, I put two away that I shouldn't have. Uh, this one here hasn't been seen yet sorry guys i forgot this guy right here x-men 121 in, an, in a uh, 9.4 first full appearance of alpha flight we have a teenage mutant ninja turtles number seven in it. <clears throat> Excuse me, in a 9.6. Uh, we also have a crow number one in an 8.0. This is a re slab, I believe. All right, last batch of books here. We got a 9.6 copy. Of uh, Batman 423, very popular Todd McFarlane cover. We've got a copy of Seduction of the Innocent 3D, number two, and that's at a 9.0. These came back really quick. These came back really, really quick. If you're just getting here now, guys, if you wouldn't mind hitting that like button, give me that, uh, do me that favor, please. It really does help with the analytics. Uh, Ice Cream Man, number eight, and a 9.0. Eight. Really sweet copy of Weird War Tales, number 42, and a 9.6 white page. That's a nice copy right there, a book you don't... You know, I have tons of Weird War at the shop, and they're usually just toast. So to see them in a 9.6 like that is wonderful. And we got a newsstand copy of uh, Amazing Spider-Man 194 as well in a 9.0 and we're finishing this one off today oh, this is i think this is adam donnelly's book if i remember correctly. man that's heavy i think you'll be happy with this i'm pretty happy with this i'm gonna go to the big screen for this, this is a big book um a, i mean size wise a big magazine We've got a copy of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Other Strangeness, no number, from 1985. A huge copy. This is a book you rarely ever see, and it's come back in a 9.6. White pages, too. Not bad at all. And that's a very difficult book to press. It's a fat book. One of those really fat books, you know? Um, 
with a thick cover. So there was a couple of issues that we seem to rectify. I'm really quite happy with the 9.6. I sure hope uh, the owner will be too. Anyways, wow, that's not, that probably weighs like four pounds on its own. Crazy. Anyways, it's a pretty cool book. A book you don't see every... Oh, sorry, guys. Boop, there we go. I didn't transfer it over. There it is right there. If you haven't seen this book before, there it is right there. That's a nice, a really cool copy. And like I said, it's uh, not your typical book, right? These are very... It's a very thick, heavy magazine. Um, when you get books like this, it's a much different process than doing uh, any of the books we just went through. It's completely different. Oftentimes, we have to cut custom uh, card or custom paper to press these. We got to be very careful with the uh, the temperatures as well. Um, and like I said, the covers being thicker than usual, they take a little, a little more care in pressing. So anyways, happy with those results. And I think that is it when it comes to today's books. Let me check. Yeah, we did that. We did those. Yeah, the only two we were missing are the two that are still at the shop. Again, it's an Amazing Spider-Man 16, Daredevil and ASM meetup, and uh, a Spider -Man, Amazing Spider-Man 20, first appearance of the Scorpion. Both are at the shop. Both are for sale. If you're in the market for that book, give me a holler. Um, I'll do the best I can at giving you the best deal possible. Um, yeah, all right. Let's keep going here. Um, let's take some of these questions. And then uh, we'll go. We'll go to the actual topic we're going to talk about today. Is Amazing Spider-Man the series to get yourself into? Let's. Well, we'll talk about that in just a sec. I think you all know the answer to that question, but let's come over to the uh, chat window here. Okay. Okay. Um, where are we? Okay, here we go. Uh, Racer Shavings. Yeah, we talked about that. Quick session with a 1.5. Uh, yeah, basically Rock City. Uh, uh, it, 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 that's one way to do it. That's for sure. Um, this is awkward. I won Rock City Comics and a guy in this, in this chat has that tag for YouTube. LOL. Huh? I think he means he's he's worked with somebody else with the same name, Rock City. Carlos here. Hey, Doc, who called the 3-0? The comic rookie did that. You did that. Uh, I put the Amazing Spider-Man number one up on my on my Facebook Comic Doctor page quite a while ago when I was before I had it graded back before Christmas and I said what grade do you guys think I got everything from 1.8 all the way up to like a 4.5 or a five I, I knew it wouldn't get that high um, but I I really thought 2.5 was a comfortable place for it but got a three so I'm quite happy with that oh look, look who's here okay GTA ladies here how's it going Adam Donnelly is here. And those are your, that's your book, right, Adam? I believe that TMNT book is yours. Jive Turkey, I'd like to see some more comic adjacent guests too. That retro toy episode was fun. Well, thanks, Jive Turkey. Oh, I felt so bad for Brian that night. I don't know if you guys saw that episode or not, guys. Uh, Brian uh, Brian uh, Heller works really hard at his YouTube channel. If you haven't had a chance to get over there and check him out yet, I'm telling you, you're going to take a trip down, down yesteryear, man. It's like total nostalgia. It is Plaid Stallion's uh the plaid stallion uh youtube channel toy ventures type in toy ventures you're gonna get there he does really deep dives into the toys we all loved as kids man i mean going back from probably late 60s up into the late 70s probably a 10-year period even into the early 80s he, i think he dabbles in that a little bit too but boy oh boy does he really do great videos they're really fun to listen to and it was fun having him on the show but as soon as he got to the show i could see his mind was elsewhere because his facebook page had just been hacked and and you know he put on his best face and came on i do appreciate that but yeah, i'd be happy to bring more people on uh like i said i'm trying to get robert meyer burnett on the show we talked a bit before he said he would do it but getting getting robert on here it's not it's gonna be a last minute thing that'll be a last minute show like I said, I have Steve coming in on on Thursday. Uh, Steve Barak coming in on th on this Thursday, um, talking about a variety of different topics, and uh, you know I've got uh, a lot of uh, you know some, some artists that I could I could tap on the shoulder that I know, actors I can tap 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 on, tap on the shoulder, and other YouTube personalities that I've come to get to know a little bit I'll ask them as well and like I said I want to bring you guys on the on, on the on the show a few of you have actually said yeah I'll come in and talk about my collection so that's probably what I'm going to do 
after next week. Or I might take that weekend, that week off. I don't know. But that's going to start happening as well, too. I'm not sure I'm going to call like one on one and it'll be like, you know, collector uh, showcase or, you know, focusing in on a collector or something like that. But we'll we'll do that as well. And those will be quick little episodes, spend half. I could even do two collectors in an episode if somebody wants to go on there. Um, maybe have like a three way conversation going on. I will see. We'll see. It's going to be a little bit of fun. I, I really do enjoy doing those shows, though. But it's kind of nerve wracking because I'm new at that whole interviewing thing. And I don't think I'm all that great at it, but I'll get there. I'll get there, guys. Okay, let's keep going here. Um, Oh, so Mike Evans clar- clarifies, he goes, he goes, his brick and mortar store is named Rock City Comics. Ah, there you go. Um, where the heck did I just, everything just jumped up there. Okay. Oh, come on. Boy, I really jumped. Uh, okay, Peter. Oh, Peter Heard. Sometimes I wish I had decided to collect a different series in ASM. We're going to talk about that in just a few moments. Mike Evans, that's really cool. Astro City, Astro Lucky Story, interesting. Didn't know that. Peter, surprised they don't move the outside cover. Thought that was the move. Okay, I forgot what we were talking about already because my brain doesn't work very well at night. I forget what we're talking about half the time. You know, three minutes after we've talked about it. Double cover, why? Okay, here we go. Oh, surprised they don't remove the outside cover. Thought that was the move. No, no. Keeping that double cover is the move because it's it's very rare. Remember, in this hobby, it's the rarity that makes the books oftentimes more sought after. Why are the Canadian price variants more valuable than the regular direct issues? More valuable than the newsstand issues? And why are the newsstand issues more valuable than the direct copies? Because there's less, or supposedly there are less of them. So when you have a double cover, especially from from a, from a Silver Age book like that and a key book, you don't touch it. You never take that cover off. You leave it on there. Remember that 6.5 that that, that, that X-Men 12 got, that, that 6.5 is the interior cover. So they give the grade to the better cover. So, yeah, nothing wrong with that. Um, nice book so far. Some sweet slabs tonight. Yes, they were. Rock City says, Brian Bowman cause grades are determined by covers by and large. Uh, Jive Turkey, Brian Bowman, I guess the outer cover could theoretically come off and you'd still have a complete book. Can't say that for the inside cover. Yeah, but you, again, you never want to remove a double, you know, the outside cover of a double cover book. You want to leave it intact as is. Rock City, Brian Bowman, in the early days, cover artists signed on the splash page in order to not deface their art. Want to hate on CBCS now too? Oh, no, I, you know what, Rock City, I, I liked, I actually prefer when the, the artists signed on the inside uh, pages. In fact, those, that, that double cover book we we're talking about belongs to Pony. Pony is an avid collector of X-Men books, as you probably could tell, and he was also an avid collector of signatures, and he has a really extensive collection of X-Men books from number one up with uh, signatures on the inside cover by not only Stan Lee, but Jack Kirby. It's pretty, it's a pretty impressive collection. Pretty uh, impressive indeed. Okay, let's keep going here. Uh, Treasury says, hey, any word on when you might launch your extended cleaning observation service? I have a couple of big books that are calling for your help. Well, funny we, you should say that. We are we are pretty much ready to move forward with it. But, it's you know, I think I got to do a show to talk about which books are the best to submit. Um, and, and also go over the risks involved. The risks to the book and the risks uh, to sending it in to, to, to be graded after the fact. Um, once I've done that, or I might do a page on my website or something, just explaining everything. So everyone knows the ins and outs and knows what to expect, right? This is not a fix-all, right? This conservation service is just that, a conservation service. And it really is for not every single book. Now, we're, we're experimenting on every single book because we want to see what's out there. But when it comes down to it, um, the time involved to do these conservations is can be lengthy. And, um, you know, the time, it, it costs money, right? So you, it, not every book is going to be uh, appropriate uh, for this service. But it's, we are pretty much ready. We're, we're getting there soon. But that being said, guys, oh, my Lord. Remember I was talking about how the pressing has kind of slowed down? This last week has been absolutely crazy. I've had boxes coming in from all, all parts of Canada and the United States, submissions from everywhere. 
Um, submissions at the shop as well too. So we're, we're starting to get really busy again. Remember I, I said I was trying to get my turnaround time from like three to four months down to two months. Still trying to. We're into November today. Officially, we're into November today. We're finishing up a lot of October books. There, there's still some in the presses, but they're pretty much done. Um, except for one order, but he said we can hold off on his. So that's why I kind of postponed his till later because he's overseas right now. But we're into November. November should go quick. December should go pretty quick. And, well, no, December we had a lot of submissions too, but not crazy. Anyways, long story short, we're starting to get busy again. <laughs> so uh, hopefully the timelines don't increase too bad. I hope they don't. Craig, what I miss? Oh, nothing. <laughs> Carlo, I'm gone. Come for my price. Hugs all over. <laughs> Where are you going? Uh, Jive Turkey, that's my weird war. Excellent. Oh, well, glad it is. Marcus says, can, can see it. Okay. Hey, he can't. <laughs> Put yourself in the tiniest square pie. No, I'm sorry. I fixed it. I fixed it. Um, uh, owned it at one point, but sold. Okay. I'm not sure what we're talking about. So it was. Uh, da, 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 da. So was it asked already? But what money? I just explained that. How much did ASM1 go for? Oh, I can't say. I'll tell you this. It, uh, I'll tell you this. Um, it wasn't. Uh, we didn't. I didn't hit ten, Canadian. I'll tell you that much. But it was up there. So basically, we we I found I pretty much charged the uh, the average CGC price right. The last the average CGC price on an ASM one right now in a three zero is around seventy five. I think it was seventy five or either seventy three, seventy five, or seventy eight hundred USD. So around ten five Canadian. I didn't charge ten five Canadian, you know. Um, but um, yeah, so it was around, you know, it was up there. It was up there. You, you do the math. It's not hard to figure out. Um, it's hard to give really great deals on these blue chip books. If you're just getting here now, we're talking about my ASM one that has been sold. You know, it's hard to give a deal on this. It's hard to give a deal on an AF15. You know what I mean? Other books, it's different. But these ones, it's hard. Even if the market's slightly down on these, they they people always ask more because they're big books. And the potential on these books is far greater than on, on a... On you know something like something like this, like I'll go right to where is it? Something like like this, you know, like this, for example, right? So, you know, gotta keep that in mind. Um, where are we here? Do you mean blue chip is an investing? In, yes, I do. Uh, or collecting? A bit of both, Marco. A bit of both. David Mason, a long time. If we see your our books in an unboxing, how long until we can pick them up? David, if they're your books, because sometimes we think they're your books, but they're not your books. But yeah, usually, so from today, what's going to happen if these books go into the hallway? My daughter will get to them probably tomorrow, uh, by tomorrow, hopefully tomorrow, sometimes Thursday. Once uh, an order is complete, I will text you. Um, if you are, if and, and I will let you know their books are ready for pickup. Uh, and then you can make a time to pick it up. Now, my times have changed at the shop this week. I guess I should explain that as well for my local clients. Um, you all know I'm half-time teaching right now. Something has come up where I've had to go back. Um, they, they were kind of, they kind of needed somebody. And I, I, I kind of said, okay. So I'm there right now. And I'm not sure for how long. It might be the full semester. It might be just a month or two. But my, my time, so I'm getting into the shop a little later than usual. So I've reduced the, the times at the shop for pickup during the week and drop off to just Tuesdays and Thursdays from, I think I said, I think 11 to 2, I think. Those are the times where Charlo and Nupur are there. So you can actually go drop off books to them. Pickups, I do prefer on Saturdays. I can be at the shop for pickups, you know, around quarter to four, four o'clock. For my Toronto clients, that is not a great time because you're getting you're gonna get stuck in rush hour coming to see me. So, anyways, it's all on my on my appointment. You can see it all there. But just to answer your question there, Dave, yeah, basically it's uh, it's uh, as soon as your order is done, I contact you once we we've, we've gone through them, and you can come. You can make an appointment to come pick them up. Hey, can showcase my 1990s? Can we could. But not many, please. I'm not a big fan of that. But I'm, I'm sure others are. Um, Rock City. Wow, not even 10K Canadian. No, they've come down. They've come down a lot. I think that book probably was a few thousand more. It's it's come. It's, it hasn't gone down a lot, though. We'll, we'll, we will take a look over at GP. Uh, that shameful for a three uh, blue label. The price? It should be more or less? Uh, I don't know the exchange rate, so I retract that. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Um... Okay, that's it, guys. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about whether or not CGC... Uh, sorry, CGC. Let's talk about whether or not um, 
ASM is a good book to, a good uh, series to invest in. I'm going to tell you, ever since I, I'm going to look at my computer for a second, guys. I'm going to try to bring something up as I talk, just so I'm not trying to be rude here. I'm just trying to organize something here. But let's, let's, let's listen to this. So from the moment I started uh, collecting comics and um, way back in the 80s, Amazing Spider-Man, the series, Spider-Man as a character in general was probably the most popular character out there. You know, maybe Batman was, uh, you know, uh, maybe no one say he was even tied. A close second. But Spider-Man was, and you're talking Marvel, it was Spider-Man. Um, as I got into doing pressing, and as I got into doing a little bit of selling, it became abundantly clear right off the bat that Spider-Man books were the hottest books that everybody wanted. People were coming in with lists of, you know, to try to complete their collections, um, you know, trying to find the big ones and get them, you know, before they explode in price. Oftentimes that would happen. And um, so Spider-Man has always had a huge following. And I think one of the main reasons why is a big part of it, and similar to Batman too, is Spider-Man's rogue gallery is so vast, right? And like, think about Spider-Man's rogue gallery. Uh, issue one, you got the chameleon. Issue two, you have the vulture. Issue three, you have Doc Ock. Issue four, okay, screw up, please forgive me. Issue four is the Sandman. Five, you got Doctor Doom, who came over for a little visit from the Fantastic Four pages. Um, issue number six, okay, now I'm going to start forgetting. Anyways, in those issues... <laughs> I'm going to be show my, I'm starting to forget. But in the other issues, you got Electro, Green Goblin, you have Craven the Hunter, you have, uh, um, who else? Uh, you know, Molten Man, as you get a bit further up, the Rhino, up an issue like in, up in the 40s. So for the first few years of Spider Man, a lot of villains were introduced. And again, those first 10 issues, 11, 12, 14, 15 issues actually have a whole slew of villains, which have become really popular. The lizard, number six is the lizard. Come on, Kevin. Um, so there's a lot, there's a lot of key issues there to collect and people go crazy for them. And the prices tend to, uh, to, to stick, right? The, t the prices tend to stick. I'm going to check if my GPA is working here. I think it is. Let's hope it, I hope it is. I want to go in here and have a quick look really quickly at, um, how much somebody at Rock City was talking about the ASM one. Let's see what the ASM one was during the height in the three zero and what it's at right now. So here we are. I'm there right now. Let's see if I can bring this up for you guys. I'll see if I can. I'll put it over here like this. Give me one sec to rearrange my, my, uh, give me one second to kind of rearrange my, uh, my uh, thing here with, with, uh, GPA here. Okay. So this is GPA right here. I'm going to try to open it up so you guys can see it. Let's see like that. So there's Spider-Man, right? Oop, no, that's not working. Hold on. Like that. Okay, there's Spider-Man right there. Come on. Okay, this ain't working. Give me one sec here. There we go. Okay, Spider-Man number one. Here it is, right there. I don't know how good you're going to see this, guys, but, but here we go. I'll try to show it to you. Spider-Man number one in a 3.0. And there's a three, okay, but fives, oh, gee whiz, it's not working. This ain't working. Let me just, uh, let me just tell you about it. How about that? Because I don't have it actually here. So a three zero, three zero right here. Okay, so we only had two sales according to GPA. Now, this is just GPA. GPA doesn't report back on Comic Link sales. It only reports back, I think, on Heritage, maybe eBay, and if you are a register, if you're registered seller with GPA, you can report your sales to them as well. But it's not the full gambit. People are selling copies of books at various prices that are not being reported to GPA. So you have to keep that in mind when you are using GPA. It is a guide. It is not sacrosanct. It's not exactly, you know, the, the begin end all, begin all of everything. But let's have a look here. So, so far this year, uh, apparently, a book one sold for my screen is one sold for ninety three hundred US and one sold for fifty seven sixty US. So, like I said, right now you're looking at um, actually, you know what? So, okay, in the height in twenty twenty one, in twenty twenty one, the high price for an ASM one three point zero was sixteen thousand eight hundred. Two thousand twenty two, fifteen thousand two hundred. Last year. 10,100, this is US by the way, and then this year the high was 9,300. 
So it's, you know, it's, it's, it's leveling off now, right? Now, prior to the craziness, prior to the COVID insanity, um, the prices were a little, it was consistently going up. Let me tell you the high price. I'm not telling you like the lowest one, the high price of a Spider-Man number one and a 3.0 from say 2016 and up. So in 2016, you could buy a 3.0 for 4,500 US. The following year, in 2017, 5480 US. In two, so now you got it's going like this, right? And this is this is before the insanity. This is before the COVID bubble, if you want to call it that. Okay, 2018, it jumps up to 77, 72 US. Again, these are the high high end prices. Okay, in 2019. It doesn't go up very much. It goes from 77,772, just a couple of hundred bucks to 79.95. In 2020, it starts so it's starting to plateau. It spikes up in 2000 from 2016 from 2013 to 2018 it jumps from $3,000 to 7772. And then it starts plateauing until the COVID craziness, it doubles from 2020 to 2021. It goes from 8,000 uh, to 16,800, almost 17,000, almost 17,000 for a 3.0 US, over 20,000 Canadian, well over 20,000 Canadian. And then uh, in 2022, it starts kind of coming back down again to 15,2. And then again, like I said, last year, high end was 10,100 and low end 6,211. And then this year so far, of course, it's only February. We've had two sales, one for 5760 and one for 9300 So like I said, I, I price it in the middle there. Uh, and that's how it went. So there you go. Um, you see, the book hasn't crashed. It's not back down to like 2010 prices. Geez, in 2010, 2011, it's a $2,500 book, U.S., I don't think we're going to see those prices again, guys. I just don't think that's going to happen. Is Amazing Spider-Man a series that, you know, uh, is worth getting into? Um, have you missed the boat on it? No, I don't I don't think you have. I don't think anyone's missed the boat. Look, there are deals to be had out there, right? You have to look for those deals. Like anything else, they don't always just present themselves to you. You have to get out there and you have to look for those deals. And keeping in mind trends looking if they're going if they're on if they're upwards or downward trends you've got to keep that in mind as well and buy smart but i don't think if you were to like if i were to keep this book now and not sell it i don't think in five years the book's going to be worth two thousand dollars i think i i think the book's going to continue to go up i think it's going to go back because the price you know the 9300 height is you know we're back to 2000 20 prices in a way 2019 2000 it's kind of where it should be every year was going up almost a thousand dollars a year we're kind of we're kind of leaping out you know we're kind of going it's kind of where it should be based on 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 its trajectory right based on 2010 to 2013 and 2016 it was trending up always it would go up fifteen hundred dollars two thousand dollars five hundred whatever but it was always it was like that little uh that, uh, you know, that dude on the uh, Price is Right. Yodly, 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 yodly. It's going up nice and sl- steadily going up. But then this is what happened, right? When the, when the market went crazy, it went like this. Then it went back down and now it's kind of continuing where it left off. It's kind of where the book needs to be. So really this book next year, if, if what I'm saying is true, I could be wrong here, guys. This book should be at least worth what it's being sold for now or should be worth about a thousand bucks more. 500 to 1,000 bucks more next year. And I think it will consistently go up as the years progress. What do you think? Am I wrong? Am I wrong? I can tell you at my shop, I have many customers who live and die by Spider-Man. They love Amazing Spider-Man. Some go as far as to collecting Marvel team-ups and Peter Parker and all the other uh, offshoot uh, series as well. But Amazing Spider-Man is the series that people want to buy when they get to it. And yeah, the books are not cheap, especially in high grade. But if you can find a collection of raw books and be careful, you know, and not overpay for them, you can do just fine. But I do call them blue chip books because they're books that everybody seems to want. 
everyone seems to love, and there's all kinds of amazing keys to sink your teeth into. Um, what do you think? Let's go over to the let's go over to the chat. See if I'm out to lunch. Maybe I am. All right, let's go and see here. Um, Rock City, what is the ASM twenty going for? I believe the ASM twenty is it's a five zero, and I believe I have seven hundred and fifty Canadian on it. And again, it's going based on GPA. You know, I kind of look around and get a price. Of course, I could probably do better than that, but I've got seven fifty Canadian on the twenty, and I'm not convinced I'm going to sell it. I might put that in my collection because I don't have an ASM 20. I was really hoping the book was going to come back like a six or a six, five. When it came back a five, I was a little less excited about the book, to be honest, but for somebody else, it might be just perfect. And if that's what you're looking for, give me a call or give me a holler, send me an email. Okay. Uh, TJ, uh, TK Junction says, just kidding. I was a joke. My Valiant Comics, I'm sure we all have. Oh my gosh, man. I've, I've had so many, you know, I bought collections where I've got like, you know, six or seven long boxes full of Valiant books. Listen, there are guys who collect that stuff. Don't don't think there's not. I just wouldn't have a lot of fun showcasing them because I, you know, I'm more into this. I'm more into this stuff we're seeing right now. Uh, Sam Man, Sam Man is four. Thanks, buddy. Uh, Marco says, investment wise, I would say ASM and X Men are the top blue chips, followed by FF and Avengers. Personally, I think that X Men has more keys and upside potential with their entry into the MCU. No DC, no DC, really? I don't know if I buy that. I don't know if I buy that, Marco. The whole no DC thing. I, I, I. There was a time there. I, listen, listen. Again, back to that conversation. Do the movies make a difference? The movies impact the values of these books. I still contend, yes, yes, they do. If if everybody's thinking about it, if everyone's minds are on it, they're gonna go and look for it. So. You know, um, as, you know, James Gunn, you know, if you want to bet on James Gunn, he has had a pretty successful run so far, whether it be Guardians of the Galaxy, Suicide Squad, and then he also did the, you know, the Peacemaker show, which I quite enjoyed, to be honest with you. If you haven't seen that one yet, check it out. It's not for kids, though. I'll tell you right now, it's a little more adult. Um, if he can do, if he can hit it out of the park with this Superman legacy, who knows, right? Who knows what that's going to do for the DC universe? It could be, and I've been saying this for over a year, I've been saying it's a great time to buy DC books, but I'm not the, I'm not the only one saying that. And DC books are starting to heat up. They are starting to heat up. So yeah, anyways, I, I, we're not talking about DC today. We're talking about ASM. I do agree with you. I was always fascinated that, that Fantastic Four had such uh, was such an expensive series because it wasn't as popular as 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 as, as the Amazing Spider Man. That being said, it was kind of the first family of Marvel, and it had that that uh, not, I wouldn't say the. Uh, it had that prestige of being that first superhero family, that group that was that was that had made an impact, and so its its prices has always been up there, right? Um, but yeah, I think ASM one were always more attainable and a little more fun. And right now, X Men, I'll tell you, X, I'll tell you, you know what, you know what series is really actually quite affordable, and I think a lot of the issues are very undervalued, are the Avengers. The Avengers series, you could get in if you want to do a run of the event. If you're one of those completists who wants to start a series and start from one and go up to a hundred or to fifty or to or to or to or to twenty four or something like that. Some guys do like you know one to twenty four the first two years, the first four years or or whatever. If you're one of those kind of guys and you're thinking which what should I do, Avengers there's is actually quite affordable. Um, I've got tons of Avengers books at the shop I haven't put out yet, like in the thirties and the forties. They're they're not that expensive. They're just not that expensive. And it's something you might want to consider getting into. But 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 Spider-Man, like you said, yeah, they maintain their value. Every Spider-Man book that I have bought since I was 15 is only appreciated. Nothing I've bought from the Spider-Man series has ever gone down. Ever. And I'm talking, I'm talking like back to the 80s, even books, even the run books. They're, 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 if you've got a Spider-Man, amazing Spider-Man book, any amazing Spider-Man book from the 80s, and I'm not talking Todd McFarlane, I'm just talking pre-Todd McFarlane even. You know, and it's a run book, not a very interesting book, but it's a nine eight. The book's worth money. It's worth a few hundred dollars, guaranteed. Not fifty dollars, not seventy dollars. I'm talking either you know high hundred US or into the two hundreds, and even into the three hundreds US. It is just that kind of a series that people want, and there are those completists out there who want to have nine point eight runs, especially when they get to like say issue. Well, from issue one, you know, one twenty to one up, I want nine eight, and those are maybe that's, that's pretty expensive. Say say one thirty and up, I want nine eight, and they'll go and they'll look for those nine eights. They're out there and they're expensive. 
In fact, I have, I sent a couple of, of, I sent about seven or eight Spider-Man books uh, to CGC about three weeks ago. I'm anxiously awaiting to get them back. I, I, I bought them from the same place. I, I picked up the Spider-Man number one, actually. And these books are, they're not super key books, but, um, but in high grade, they're amazing Spider-Man, right? They're amazing Spider-Man. In 9.6, 9.8, even 9.4, they're worth a few hundred dollars. So I, I took a chance on them. I bought them. I dropped 600 bucks. I'm hoping I can double my money once after the grading's all done. And um, we'll see what happens, right? But they pressed out beautiful. You saw one of them online, the one with the, with the tracing, with the Hulk, the 120, I think it was. No, one, 119. Yeah, 119 or 120. The Hulk and Spider-Man issue, the Romita issue. Uh, I have it on my Instagram. You can see the some kid outlined around Spider-Man. Like, I saw that. I'm like, this book's going to press out great. And it did. But will I get a 9.4 on it or a 9.2? I don't know. I hope so. Because those Hulk issues are, are pricey if they're over 9.0. Um, Mr. Chandler, ASM is what mainly decided the... to. Sorry, ASM is what I mainly decided to mainly collect, okay? Wanted to do Batman 2, but I missed that chance a long time ago. Well, Batman, yeah, that's, that's not a cheap... Uh, not a cheap endeavor. I, I had a good friend, uh, local guy here, Brian. He made it his life's mission to have a full run of Batman, and he did it. He went out and he was hustling, and he bought Batman one. He got he had a whole run of Batman one all the way up to eight hundred. He sold them all to uh, through Comic Link. I think it was about four three years ago before COVID. He did it. And I'm like, oh, you gotta sell all those. I, I still talk to him sometimes. And he's like, yeah, I miss those books. And of course, it's it's a, it's a, it's like it becomes a life mission once you once you have your your heart set on something. You know, you want to complete that 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 series. You it's 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 a fun it's a fun it's a fun hobby, guys. It can be expensive, but it's fun. Um, uh, Rock City says Marco Coletta, long term investing in media, add forty years to something with nostalgia, unless that nostalgia started before. Do you mean that? Uh, uh, in 40 years, it's done. Like, it's not going to be popular anymore. I, I worry about that, guys. I, I do worry that these books are going to be worth, like, they're going to be fire kindling in 70 years. Who's going to want this stuff after we're all gone? I don't know. That that does worry me. And that does make me think I should just get rid of everything. Because I have a feeling that, you know... My brother would always talk to me about that because we were into old cars. Like I, I've mentioned that before. And, you know, I love the old Mustangs and the old, you know, the old Mopars and such. And, and I'm thinking, okay, well, my brother has a connection to Mopar because he, he just loved them when he was a kid back in the early 70s. He, all the colors and all that, right? And, 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 the, and the Challengers and the Chargers and all that. And he grew up with that. But kids from the 80s didn't grow up with that. Are they going to want to go out and buy a Mopar car? And you guys know what some of these cars are fetching. at the, You know, Barrett Jackson, they're fetching like crazy money. But are these cars always going to fetch that kind of money? You know, are, uh, I, I have seen, I know when I started going to car shows, you know, 20 years ago, cars from the 1950s, you know, were really expensive. Like four, you know, T-Birds from the, from the 50, was it 57 T-Bird or 59 T-Bird? Both with the porthole in the back. I forget the year. 55? Anyways, they were crazy money. Like crazy, crazy money. They're coming down, right? They're coming down. Because the dudes who enjoyed those cars are no longer around. Right, I, I go on to marketplace. I look at some of these vintage cars from the '50s, and the prices are like really quite reasonable for the amount of work that's been put into these cars. You can buy them for I wouldn't say a song; they're still fetching good money, but nowhere near what they were fetching, say, 15, 20 years ago. Maybe I'm wrong. Again, I'm not an expert in this, but from what I've noticed, you know, um, like my Camaro that I have uh, during COVID, it just spiked in price. Now it's come back down again, but it's an '81 Camaro. It's a Z28. People. That, that was like kids from the from the from the, who were born in like 75 76 77 remember those cars very fondly they want those cars and those guys are in their late 40s right now so they're going back and buying those cars so those cars are the value of those cars are going up that's all i'm saying so you know will kids because kids aren't going to the comic store anymore you know they're just not not like they used to. Um, when I used to go to the comic store when I was a kid, I'm sure you can agree with me on this one. You know, you'd have a whole variety of guys in there. No girls. Never, never any girls. It was, it, was, it, was a, it was a total sausage party, let's be honest. But it was um, guys that were like, you know, 14 and up, you know, uh, 14, 15 and up. Now when you go to the comic store, I don't see kids. I see guys in their mid-20s, but I don't see 15 and 16-year-olds. Am I wrong? I don't know. You tell me. Um, I feel that Sony has hurt the ASM brand and prices of important ASM books, 101, 252, 361, all in the dumps. And I think that that has more to do with Sony mismanagement. Um, 
Yeah, you know, ASM was a was a, was a fire. It was a mess, and to, and and the venom, the venom stuff, I thought has has been pretty crappy, and the carnage stuff as well. Um, but I don't know if it's really hurt it all that much. One one hundred one, yeah, I agree. One hundred one, the value of one hundred one has has gone down quite a bit. And there was a while there where one hundred one was quite a valuable comic book, and now it's kind of just, yeah. Was it Sony mismanagement? Just bad, just bad writing, bad stories. You know, just you know when these studios are rushing to get these these pro these products out to sell to the public, and the public doesn't like it. You know, not good. Rock City says, I believe the up opposite. Here in America, everyone wants their just right Goldie Lock Spidey. Kudos to them. More people t uh, liking Spider Man, whatever, whatever isn't a bad thing. The one thing you can say, even though it was bad, because remember, the Tobey Maguire Spider Man 3 was a piece of garbage. And that was with Venom. That was Venom's first real foray into the big screen. It was awful, right? With uh, Topher Grace, or whatever his name was. That was awful. But people have gotten to know Venom. People have gotten to know Spider-Man more. But I kind of agree with Rock City in that, you know, again, back to what I was saying, you have these key books. Like all these early Spider-Man books are key uh, and valuable in their own right. Spider-Man, with, notwithstanding, you have these characters that are very popular and have stood the test of time. And and I think, I, I, I do believe those first, you know, 15, the, actually the first 50 to 20 Holy cow. I actually, I'd say the first 50. I doubt Kingpin, right? Number 50. I didn't even talk about number 50. One to 50 of Spider-Man are sought after. That's it. They get the Goblin books, the Ramita stuff, like, uh, was it uh, 40, 39 and 40? Those are big books too, right? Classic covers, classic stories, amazing characters, great artwork, good stories. So those books are sought after. Aggressively relaxing. Look, how well these books sell to kids who knew about the character thanks to the cartoon. Imagine what the kids who grew up on the MCU will pay. That's that's the only... <laughs> aggressively relaxing. That's the one thing I could say might save it. These kids who are watching these movies, will they go out and buy collectibles? Will they go out and seek out the comics where the origins of these books, uh, uh, the origins of these characters first appeared. I don't know. Because movies are not comic books, right? Would, maybe they'll go, buy, they'll go buy a DVD and have it signed by you know Tom Holland or Tobey Maguire. Are they going to want to go out and buy, you know, are they going to want to go out and drop $20,000 on one of these later on? You know, I don't know. I hope you're right. I hope you're right. I don't know. I don't know. But that's, that's the way I was thinking too, right? Uh, Mike is laughing. <laughs> Astro, I agree the MCU nostalgia will hit with the next generation eventually. But again, they are watching the movies. They are not buying the comics. I was doing a kind of a get to know you thing in my class today. And one of the, we had, it was kind of a show and tell. Bring 10 items in that you want to, you know, that kind of express who you are type of thing. And a young lady brought out a Funko Pop of Spider-Man. She says, I, I, I'm not obsessed with the MCU, but I really like Spider-Man and I like his appearance in the MCU. Then I showed them, uh, you know, the, the copy of the ASM one. Um, you know, but are they going to go out? Uh, are they going to go out and buy one of these? Right? Are they going to go out and buy one of these? Are they? I don't know. Not sure. Not sure. We'll see. I, I still think, you know, guys, I'm 52 years old. I don't see myself stopping this until I'm like this, you know? So I think we got at least, you know, I don't know how much longer I got. <laughs> no one knows. But, you know, if I last 20 or 30 years, I'm sure at least 20 of those 30 years will still be me playing around with comic books. And and so, I, I know, uh, I, I got a lot of clients that are in their 30s and 40s, so... There's other guys coming up the other side, so we'll see. We got a little bit of time left, I think. I don't think comics are going to be worthless in the next two years. But in the next 30 or 40 or 50 years? I don't know. Don't have a crystal ball. Uh, Roxy, at some point, the clarity of character will win out, despite diversity. Okay. Avengers isn't too bad at all, Mr. Chandler says. I agree. I, I think it's a great... Avengers is a fun, a fun series. Even number one, you could pick up a number one, probably, you know, a lower grade, probably for a couple of thousand bucks, two or three thousand probably, which is not bad for a, a first, the first... It's a great cover, right? That first Avengers cover. Um, yeah, you got some big keys in there too. You know, you got the first Wonder Man, the first Kang. 
Um, you know, you got the first uh, Vision and other characters too throughout the the run. But as you get into the twenties and thirties, those early those nineteen sixties issues, they're not. If, especially in like mid grade, you can buy them like slabbed sevens and eights for a good price. They're still totally, totally. If I mean, if that's if you're into collecting. Now, are they going to be worth tons of money down the road? I don't know that much. But if you're in, if you just if you're just kind of itching to collect something, the Avengers series is totally doable. Is totally doable. Um, Eric, Eric, how you going? I'm happy to have ASM fifty to four hundred, pecking away. And I'm about 15 inches from getting 1 to 50. Wow. But some books here might be hard for me. Eric is actually probably going to be one of the first guys we feature here on the channel as you know, as we focus on some of you guys, some of the collectors, some of my clients. And maybe if you're not my client, I don't care. I just want to talk to other collectors. I want to know your origin story, how you got into collecting. So I'll, I'll hook up with Eric and we'll talk about that. Maybe we'll get him in here, not this Thursday, maybe next Thursday. What are you doing next Thursday, Eric? Maybe we'll do that. Um, TK Junction says, whoop, 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 what happened there? TK Junction says, where are you buying from local to Durham area? I, I found that's, yes. The Spider-Man book I bought local here in Oshawa. And um, the AF book, the AF-15, which I just kind of showed you, that kind of just came into the shop. That kind of just came into the shop. And that's going to CGC like pronto. And that AF-15 might be for sale. Might be. I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure yet. Um, that's crazy good for him. At Comic Doctor, as long as printed word remains, fear not. Well, I hope you're, I hope you're right, Rock City. Uh, usually money loves to buy back their child. Well, that's that's it. That's what we're all doing. We're, uh, is that what you're doing? Because I think that's what I'm doing. We all are buying, you know, our childhood. You know, I had uh, Josh came into the shop on Saturday and I've had, I have toys at the shop. Like I've, I've picked up toys over the, for, over the last several years. And I've got a lot of toys from the 90s and 70s and 80s and whatever. But the 90s toys are getting a lot of attention from people. There weren't the toys I played with. But guys are coming in. Like I had a whole Darkwing Duck set he picked up on Saturday. I had a whole collection of them. They weren't all mint or anything, but there was a whole set of them there. And he bought the whole damn thing. Um, everybody's got their jam. Everyone's got their uh, the thing they want to remember, the one thing they want to celebrate. I mean, I, I got right over there. I, I can't turn the camera. I always talk about it. One day, one day, I think this summer I'm going to rearrange this room. These presses are going to go to the shop. I want them out of here. And I'm just going to be a whole backdrop of all my, uh, and I move my desk back to, and you know, so I'm not in your face so much. And I'm going to have some toys on display. Some of the toys I played with growing up and uh, some of the statues I have and some of the comics I have. I got a lot of nice comics too. Uh, so that when you're, we're talking here, you can see more of my, my, uh, my love for the hobby as well too, as a collector. Um, it's a, it's a sickness though. <laughs> it's, a, it's a sickness. I want them all. And then another another a client said, "Oh, there's a collection uh, out of out of Oshawa. Are you interested?" I'm like, "Yes." And it was a great collection, but it's in the states, and I I can't get there. So, yeah. Uh, Peter G. Hey Pete. A ease of entry cost wise. ASM runs 100 plus is good bet for future uh, price appreciation or 3.0 to 6.0 grades. ASM one to 100. You're probably right. And 100 plus is attainable. You know, start somewhere. Start somewhere. Start at ASM, um, you know. I wouldn't go out and say, yeah, I'm going to go pick up, uh, you know, a copy of AF-15 and a copy of uh, ASM. This is that's a lot of money, right? Unless you've got deep pockets, I wouldn't say start there. Unless, of course, you get a smoking, smoking deal. Look at this. They're, they're, they're all over the place, guys. Another one of these, too, i got to work on. Another ASM one. This one here has got lots of tape on it. So we're going to remove that. It's a lot of tape instead. I'm going to remove all that tape and clean that up. We will do that this weekend, I think. Get her all ready. Um, woo. Uh, Rock City, I have an ASM4. First appearance of Sandman. High grade. I'm biased. <laughs> oh, my books are all 9, nine zero. Come on. Lewis is here. A Spider-Man video game. Ooh, yeah, probably a Spider-Man video game. One of the first ones would be worth money, I would think. I have somewhere here a first edition Spider-Man in VHS, Tobey Maguire, I want to send in to get graded because it's mint. 
Well, if comics remain a medium, then I think people will want to collect them. Will our comics retain value in 150 years? Likely not. But who knows? I just bought a 150-year-old coin for 100 bucks. Well, there you go, right? You know, and something I want, and I want, you know, something I really want to buy, and if anybody out there has one and wants to gift it to me, I'll happily take it. I don't know why I want this. And I don't collect books at all. I know nothing about collecting like books, like novels and things. I want a first edition. I might have I might have said this in the show before. I want a first edition copy of A Christmas Carol, Charles Dickens. I want it. I just want it, right? Uh when they're out there, I can get a really low grade copy for probably around three or four thousand. I think around three or four thousand dollars. I, I just want one. That story, I love that story, you know. And um, I think a lot of us do. We grew up with that story at Christmas time. I, I just think of um, England at that time when Dickens released it. It just it's just it's a, it's such a romantic. I don't know something about that time period really uh, intrigues me. And and that story, you know, Dickens did a lot. Look, at Dickens wrote a whole bunch of stuff, and you know, much more, uh, he published works that are far more, you know, Tale of Two Cities and, you know, uh, that are, you know, uh, Oliver Twist, I think he wrote too, right? Did he write, Oliver, did he write Oliver Twist? I'm not sure if he wrote Oliver Twist. Did Charles Dickens write Oliver Twist? I don't think so. No, I got to check that because, you know, let's see, Oliver Twist. Am I totally wrong here? Who wrote it? Author. Charles Dickens, yeah, he did, okay, there you go, I was right, um, so he's, he's wrote other stories that are, that are much more popular in terms, you know, um, in terms of novels, because A Christmas Carol was a novelette, it was a tiny little throwaway story, right, uh, and perhaps that's why they're so expensive, there's not many out there. But I'd love to get a copy of that. So I mean, yeah, you get your coins. I, I collect all kinds. I collect comics. I collect toys. I'll, I'll I'll collect a lot of different things. Things that just certain things that appeal to me in certain ways. I want them. Uh, Mr. Chandler, Sony problem. Sony's problem is it's hard to be a good villain movie for the Spider-Man franchise franchise without including Spider-Man. Well, they're like I have no interest in seeing Craven the Hunter. Do you? I really don't. And these this whole Madam Web thing. I have no desire to see this movie at all. But you know what? Who knows? Maybe it'll be fantastic. And if it is, I will go out and support it. But yes, Spider-Man is 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 popular. I, I think, I, I don't... Someone said, well, why don't they have different universes? Why can't we have Toby movies going on while Tom Holland's in the MCU, while, you know, uh, um, what's his name? Uh, Andrew Garfield's doing his own. They, they said they won't do it because Marvel won't allow it. They don't want to have multiple Spider-Man at the same time. It's too confusing. How confusing is it? I don't think it's that confusing, but apparently they don't want to do that. Um, is what kids want. Um, oh, video game is what kids want. Yeah, th that's what they—that's what they're gonna want for sure. Kids today, guys, I'm gonna tell you uh, when I did that little thing today where the kids showed and did a show and tell. The main thing these, these are 15 year old kids. Okay, the one thing not one kid showed me a comic book. They all brought, but many of them, every single boy, to brought out like a PS4 or a PS5 remote control uh, or uh, joystick. You're right, or controller. Sorry. So, Lewis, I agree with you, and. Many of them also brought out boxes of Pokemon cards. So they have their, they have the things they love, right? They have the things they love. But, but don't Pokemon cards and comic books and all those things, kind of, they're kind of intertwined in some way, right? Because a lot of the Pokemon cards you buy, you buy from comic book stores. I don't know. I, I don't know the answer. I don't know which, you know. Uh, wait, wait, what? AF15, dude, let's make a deal. <laughs> TK Junction, one day I will. This will be coming back from CGC and, and I'll decide. I'll decide. Should still have 15 years of comic books to increase in value. After that, who knows? Younger generations just aren't interested in physical items unless that changes for some yet unknown reasons. Well, listen, we all know that LPs have come back. 33s have come back. There's a store that just opened downtown Oshawa. It's a really nice store. If you're in the if you're local to the Oshawa area, right by the Regent Theater there, they uh, opened up, this guy opened up a brand new uh, album, like a record store, and it was beautiful. Tons of albums, old, new, you name it. So is that, is that a viable thing? People want that. Uh, I'm going to tell you, I, I've gotten rid of all my physical media. I've gotten rid of all my DVDs. I sold them to a local secondhand store because they're, they're just 
they just get in the way. But then last week I was I, I I was looking for movies for my class, and a guy on Marketplace had a hundred. He had a hundred and twenty hundred and fifty dollars for a bunch. He said hundred and fifty dollars for a DVD collection, and I said how about one hundred and twenty five? It's for my class. He said sure. I went and picked it up. Five hundred and fifty movies on DVD, most of them on Blu-ray actually, and tons of action movies, tons of comedies, mostly from the eighties, and. Uh, he gave me the like the the the, the, the like a giant wood, uh, you know, case to hold them as well. So I put them in my in my garage, and me and Jack sorted through them all. It was a lot of fun going through all the movies. And so every weekend now we're gonna watch two or three movies. They're not gonna go to school. They're gonna stay here. I end up I end up buying back over almost six hundred movies on DVD and Blu-ray. You know, that was not my intention to do. So you know, will will these movies become popular? A lot of there's a lot of guys out there who really love collecting their physical media like audio files with their records you got dudes collecting physical media there's a show called um let's get physical i mentioned robert meyer burnett he has a show every sunday uh, and it focuses strictly on new releases dvd and blu-ray releases and uh and collecting collecting uh physical media and burnett is also or was also an avid comic book collector so there you go right uh, Mr. Chandler, comic, uh, da, 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 where are we here? Sorry, Mr. Chandler, I kind of skipped over you. Comic industry needs to pay attention to what the Japanese are doing with manga if, if comics are to remain relevant. The easy answer to what, what whether Spider-Man people will collect early stuff is yes, Spider-Man is Spider-Man. No matter how presented, he's basically Marvel's Superman Boy Scout, 100%. 100%. My journey into comics spawned the, from love of the 90s animated Spidey cartoon. So many, maybe there is hope future generations find the same pathway to comics from the movies. Eric, that we'll talk about that when you come on the show, but I would agree with you. My, my first foray into comics was not buying comic books, but it was watching the cartoons, whether it was Spider-Man and his amazing friends. Before that, the Super Friends uh, from the 1970s, I'm sure you, a lot of you guys watched those. You know, with Zan and Jaina, and with Marv and oh, what was her name? Marv and uh, Wonder Dog and Marv, and I forget her name. You guys know who I'm talking about. And uh, I love those those shows, and even other like Rocket Robin Hood and the old Spider-Man cartoon from the 60s, the Batman and Robin show or the Batman show from the 60 from 66. All that all that television exposure to the superheroes, and it just took my meeting a dude in high school who just happened to have a poster in his locker of ASM 252. And I'm like, what the hell is that? And I was hooked. I was hooked. I wanted to know more about the characters. I remember buying Marvel Age. And who the hell bought Marvel Age? I bought Marvel Age because I wanted to learn the history of the comics, right? And that Marvel Age did just that. I also bought the Marvel Universe series so I could read about all the different characters. I, I just totally jumped in. But you're right. It wasn't the comic. I didn't go to a comic store. My dad didn't take me to a comic store and buy me my first comic book. No, I was buying toys, comic-related toys, Amigos and whatever, and the Pocket Heroes and uh, the cartoons and the TV shows. That's what did it for me. Um... TK says, I just sold traded almost my entire toy collection, all my Kenner Star Wars, original Transformers, G.I. Joe. Uh, it's all about getting ASM and that AF-15. Oh, well, oh. That's hard, man. I can never, I, I sold a bunch of, I always regret when I sell my toy, my childhood toys. I, I regret it. I regret selling my, my, my Masters of the Universe collection. Didn't have many because I was kind of getting a little old at that point. But I do regret it because, like I said, my dad bought me those. And they were friggin' expensive back then. Like, like the He-Man toys, where a Star Wars figure was three ninety nine, the He-Man was closer to ten, like seven, eight, nine, 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 ninety nine. It was they were expensive, right? And I feel really stupid for getting rid of those. But what are you gonna do? What about Tim from Osh was finest? Worlds collide, unicorn, old school customer for you. Oh yeah, you know I thought about giving Tim a call. He'd probably be a interesting one to talk to as well. Tim has been in the industry for a long time. Uh, and that could very well happen. Maybe I'll reach out to him, or even some of the other owners too. I could. I thought about interviewing a Jim uh, from um, a Jim or Eric or both from uh, Guardian 
uh, Comics and Pickering. Uh, those guys are both Overstreet advisors. That'd be they'd be good to talk to as well. So yeah, and even to talk about them about their comic journey, even to talk to Tim about his comic journey, because I really find that fascinating. I, I'm even going to talk to Steve Bar- Barak about that. How did he get into comics Bef- you know, before CGC and when he, when he was a ten year old kid? What was his first exposure to comic books? What what hooked him at that time? I love learning about people's origin stories when it comes to their collections. Like today at school, I'm walking down the hall. My wife works with me too. And she's talking to a guy who saw one of my ads, a guy who works at the school. He's a new, new, uh, a new hire at the school. And uh, he saw, I think he saw some of my ads on Marketplace for the, for the, for the store, for the, some toys I have. And he put two and two together and realized that I was really into it. And my wife was kind of filling him in on what I do, what the comic doctor was and all that. And he was so excited. And it's funny, a lot of guys don't share that side of themselves, right? They don't share that they collect toys or they collect comic books. Some guys are really kind of like, they're not sure how others will react to that. I have never really given a shit personally. I, I you know, I, 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 I'm... That's what I do, right? That's what I am. But some guys are really private about it. And so when he when he found out I was working at the school, he, his eyes lit up and, he, and you know he just wants to start talking about collecting and toys and vintage Kenner and all that kind of stuff. And I'm I'm totally into that. Mm-hmm. All right. Oh, there's another guy I might ask. Didn't there's a guy who, who runs the Imperial, uh, what's it called? It's a Star Wars toy site in the States. I could tap him on the shoulder too. He's really quite... Uh, quite cool knows his stuff um adam says what okay so we did the right rock city find me the finest goose <laughs> that's right uh cameron summers he did okay jive turkey several months ago i had i held in my hand the first edition tale of two cities signed by dickens to george elliott de- dated december oh my gosh jive turkey that is cool i want to know that story i want to know that story i don't need my my mind signed i just just want to have a copy of that uh, and I'm not a big avid reader at all. Other than comic books, I never really did novels. I just never got into it. But some of those first edition issues of those important books, you know, I mentioned A Christmas Carol, I would love to have. Um, you know, uh, 1984, you know, these science fiction, these science fiction novels, first edition. Yeah, I, I'd be okay. I'd be into that. Wouldn't be more confusing than the current state of the MCU Amazing. Would it be more confusing? What are we talking about here? I am so confused. The comments would remain relevant. I'm sorry, Cameron. I'm not sure. I might have said something kind of got off tangent there. Um, Mike says, ooh, where are we here? Save your, <laughs> save your iPhone 4. It's going to be worth a ton. Don't know about that. Rock City says, what Sony means when they say they're not doing multiverse things is that they don't think individuality and personal preference doesn't equate to profit enough. And that, to me, is absolutely stupid. I think that if they were to have uh, three distinct Spider-Man stories going on at the exact same time, I mean, I wouldn't release the movies in the same weekend, but if you had you know, three different Spider-Man storylines going on at the same time, I think they'd make a fortune. I think they'd make a freaking fortune. If they did not see the the response to that movie, if they thought that movie was all because of Tom Holland or all because of Andrew Garfield or all because of Toby or, or any of the villains or Willem Dafoe or, or whoever that showed up, it was all of it. It was all of it. It was nostalgia. It was like nostalgia overdose. It was fan service overdose, but it was done good. It was done well, right? And I always go back to it. And I always say they actually gave each of these characters something to do, right? They just didn't appear and disappear the next second. Dr. Strange had an arc. Tobey Maguire's character, Andrew Garfield's character, had a bit of an arc. Even when, like the moment when Andrew Garfield dives over and saves MJ and drops her and he's kind of holding back his tears. We all know what that, why that upset him because his MJ didn't survive. Or no, sorry, his Gwen Stacy didn't survive, right? We, we remember that. It's just, and even when, when Tobey Maguire sees um, um, Doc Ock and he goes, good to see you, my boy. You know, we know he dies. Like he, di- he dies in Tobey's universe. So now he's back to life because he was, ripped out of the multiverse before his death. 
So there's so much going on there. It's so it was so well done. I I again I guys when I I sat down and watched that film. My daughter can tell you I had a big grin on my face. I was I thoroughly enjoyed uh, Spider Man No Way Home. I thought it was a lot a lot of fun, hell a lot of fun, and I was so disappointed with Doctor Strange after that and Thor. Oh my God, don't get me started. And and I can't understand why they wouldn't have would have wouldn't have um, you know uh, built on that momentum. They didn't. They they didn't. They didn't. But what can you do? Um, eighties action movies, epic. Yeah, lots of Van Damme, lots of Stallone, lots of uh, uh, Schwarzenegger. T- oh, uh, even Seagal, which I'm not a fan. I'm not a big Steven Seagal fan, but all those movies are in there, and a ton more. The John Hughes films are there. We got a lot of. We saw. So Saturday night was a double feature for Jack and I, and we watched in those DVDs. I was telling you, I said, go out and pick some. Okay, these are not like you know, like Academy Award winning movies, especially the second one. I'm going to tell you. We watched Caddyshack. We got to watch Caddyshack, right? Bill Murray, Chevy Chase, Rodney. My son loved. And it's his first time ever seeing Rodney Dangerfield. He freaking laughed. Every time Rodney Dangerfield came on, he got a kick out of that. And the other movie we watched, and not because it's a good movie, we watched The Next Karate Kid. It was in there. The whole Karate Kid saga was there. We've seen, he's seen one, he's seen two, he's seen three. He's seen Ola Cobra Kai. And he's not seen uh, the Hilary Swank. Awful, awful film, The Next Karate Kid. But I figured we should watch it because I have a sneaking suspicion Julie, that's her name, is going to show up in the last season of The Karate Kid. I have a feel. I could be wrong. But just in case, I unfortunately exposed my son to The, the Next Karate Kid. It was it was pretty bad. Christopher Kane directed that too. What a, what a letdown. But we have so much more in there to, to watch. But that was, that's the first two, right? That's the first two. Um uh, they're stuck on movie. These stars would do multi-year deals, right? Oh, 100%. Netflix, save us and make it happen. Oh, 100%. They would. Or, or that, you know what, Rock City? What a great idea. You could have like a Tobey Maguire Spider-Man series on freaking Netflix or on or on a streaming service, on Disney Plus or whatever. And then have, you know, Toby or not Toby. You could have Andrew Garfield do something. I don't know. There was so much you could do. And Andrew Garfield's uh, star has risen since he did play to Peter Parker, like, if you guys have ever seen Tick Tick Boom or you know Hacksaw Ridge or whatever, he's he's done some great movies. I, I've really grown to really appreciate Andrew Garfield since I didn't care for him in Amazing Spider-Man, to be honest. His other movies, especially Tick Tick Boom, the Jonathan Larson story, the guy who wrote uh, uh, Rent, the musical, it was on. I think it's on Amazon. Excellent movie. Um, after I saw that, I was a total Andrew Garfield acolyte. Then I saw him in the No Way Home, and I was so excited when he was on there. I was like, oh, it's Andrew Garfield. <laughs> I was like a total fanboy for Andrew Garfield, and I did not care for him in the other Spider-Man movies. Um, uh, what are we going here? Uh, it'd be appointment watching. Appointment meaning you have to watch it type thing? I bought Marvel Age, MU, Encyclopedia, and Saga, so I was not alone. Oh, sorry. It wasn't Marvel Age. Marvel Saga. That's what I was talking about, Chandler. Thank you. It was my. It was. It was. Um, it was a hundred percent. It was. I bought all those two. Marvel Age, the 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 MCU encyclopedia, and Marvel Saga. Marvel Saga is what I bought. Um, thanks, Cameron. Uh, good cartoons are great entry points for kids to get into the hobby. I got into Spider Man and Batman from the animated show. There you go, right there. So, so I'm not alone. I'm not alone. I don't know how I feel about Overstreet people. Oh, uh, they're they're both good guys. I, I deal with Eric and 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 Jim. They're they're good dudes. I can't speak to anybody else who's an Overstreet advisor, but these guys I know personally. I was referring to Oliver Twist earlier. You weren't sure if Dickens wrote it. No, he, he did. Did I say? Oh, I thought Tale of Two Cities. Well, oh, sorry, um, confused there. I agree. Spider Gwen, Spider Man, Spider Boy. Why the hell not? Let's go. Go go Spider Man. Go Spider. Even you can tap any universe. You hundred percent can. A No Way Home was was good fan service. Good fan service, well done fan service. Uh, Deadpool trailer for Super Bowl, is that what they're saying? Is that this Sunday? I don't know. I don't follow football. I think it's this Sunday. Rob Bin, just got here. First thing off, how was the iDoc? Oh, wow. Second, did you already address the new CGC scammer revelation? Oh, boy, Rob. Rob, where you been? I, um, I've, do- I've talked about that in a few episodes. If you want to hear my thoughts on it, just go back and watch a couple of the last few videos. Uh, I spoke with... Um, uh, 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 with D9.9 newsstand last week. 
and I made other comments about it. I'm not going to get into it today. Um, but yeah, we have spoken about it. How's the eye? The eyes, oh my God, so much better. I had my surgery last March. It's much better. However, now I have to get cataract surgery on my right eye. That was a part of the deal. I knew that by doing that other surgery, I had a vitrectomy. The doctor said, if you have a vitrectomy within a year, maybe a year and a half, you're going to have to have cataract surgery on that same eye. And my appointment to see that surgeon is in three weeks or four weeks so it's coming up so i'm probably going to have uh cataract surgery on this baby soon but man oh man a thousand times better i'm so happy i did the surgery i've had no complications a little bit of pressure problems eye pressure problems but drops are keeping that under control my eye feels fine it's not dry anymore it's just doing good man doing so thanks for asking certainly appreciate it caddyshack is something that needs to be seen <laughs> Exactly, eh? You know, I watched it and I wasn't like, oh, it's the best comedy, but it's just a really good film. Uh, it's, it needs to be seen in order to understand progress, 100%. It's one of those coming of age movies you have to see it. I saw Caddyshack when I was like nine. Another one he has, to, he has to watch is The Blues Brothers, right? The Blues Brothers. It's a great movie too. Marco, and it's out there also. Uh, I can't agree with you on Spider on 3 Spider-Man. I, I can't agree with you on 3 Spider-Man. I think they work well together or at least as part of an arc. Individual movies, no, but that's me. I think the X-Men are more important to Marvel. Oh, listen. No, hold on a second. Marco, I didn't say I didn't want to see X-Men movies. I'm just saying, uh, look, we're talking, this this whole conversation sprouted from, is Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man specifically, uh, a, uh, a blue chip series that you should collect? A, a, is it a good series to get into even now if you want to see your investment increase in value over time? That's where this all started from, Okay. And then, of course, we start talking about the movies. And the answer to the blue chip question is yes. I still think that Spider-Man is a series. People are always asking for that. Always. I mean, I'm getting weekly calls about, I mean, do you have this issue, that issue? If I put books for sale, they go pretty quickly. This Spider-Man book sold, I didn't even, I I knew, I I had a feeling he'd want it and he he grabbed it. And I, I have a feeling if he didn't grab it, I would have I would have put it up and it would have I, actually I had two other guys I was going to ask after him because because I, I know but he specifically asked if you have one please let me know first and I I I, I, I respected him and I said yeah by all means a great customer so I helped him out in that regard it's a it's a, it's a book everybody wants it's a series that everybody wants so it's a popular series Spider Man is popular why can't all I said is that if you had and they're not going to do this. But if they decided to go down that road, if they decide to have three separate franchises with three distinct Spider-Man in it, they would they would all, I think, do very well. And I would arc, of course, if I had three different series going on, I'd have them arc again and meet meet somewhere, somehow meet together again, have three different stories going on and three different universes and have them come together. But not a lot of people are fond of that whole multiversal thing. I don't blame them. It's kind of kind of strange but that's all i said but i want yeah you're right we got to get into the x-men although again i'm not really happy with how the x-men i I don't want to see the x-men from sony i don't or sorry from from 20th century fox i don't want to see that rendition of the x-men i think we needed to start over again but maybe deadpool will kind of solve all that one thing I'm not going to do, though, which I've done time and time again for all these freaking Marvel movies, is try to say that, oh, Deadpool's going to fix everything, you know? Because um, I would say that over and over again. Oh, Doctor Strange is going to fix everything, or, or Wanda's going to fix everything. She's going to bring the X-Men in. You know, all these, 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 these speculative ideas as to how they might fix things or bring characters in, I'm done doing that because they're always really over the top ideas and let's face it marvel doesn't really go over the top like that the fact they gave us that spider-man with three different characters still actually astounds me to be honest um i know people love peter parker but the x-men have had more impact on marvel comics and movies yeah we could argue that a bit <laughs> but yeah i guess you, you could you could argue that backwards and forwards marco we wouldn't have the sony spider-man or the mcu without the success of x-men well yeah okay they were the they were that the x-men movies were the were the ones that showed that look at these 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 uh these superhero characters are popular they can make us some real money yeah, they realized that. So the X-Men did pave the way. 
And once X-Men started doing really well, Spider-Man with Toby came out and also did very, very well. Um, but yeah, but they all need, they all need, they, they're all, they're all popular, right? Done well, done well, all these films will do, do very, very well at the box office. Like Star Wars, uh, done well or done poorly? Done well or done poorly, Star Wars will do very well at the box office, which astounds me. But I think we're 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 not going to fall for it anymore. I don't think so. I don't think fans are going to fall for it anymore. Maybe they will. Fans can sometimes be a little. They don't want to see what's right in front of them sometimes. Um. Uh, la 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 la. Hi, Kevin. Cheers. Hey, Pat. How's it going? David says, or oh, David. I'll tell you, Porky's is in there. He's not watching that one yet. All right, Porky's is in there, and about. I didn't realize they made that many American Pie movies. Oh my God, whoever owned this collection, they had every version of American Pie and he's not watching those yet either. I'm going to give him a few more years. He's only in grade eight. Although, although I think I saw Porky's when I was like in grade seven or something like that, but I'm not letting my son watch it. It's a little too, little too, little too much, a little too rough. Lewis says, my favorite joke from Caddyshack was, when Rodney's shown the picture of someone whose wife is says, the last time I seen a mouth like that would have had a hook in it. Yeah, that's great. Um, I just love, I love Ted Knight's reactions to Rodney, how angry Ted Knight gets at, at Rodney Dangerfield. You know, when he's trying to golf and he's got the journey music playing and he's dancing. Jack was laughing on at how he was dancing up on the hill. That's the best. My favorite part, of the movie for when I was a kid was of course the, uh, the, uh, what, what chocolate bar was it? I forget the girl throws a chocolate bar in the pool. It's like, doo, 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 doo. and there's like poo in the pool and they had to drain the pool. And then he eats the chocolate bar. Right. It was good. You know, it's pretty funny. Love it. Um, I mean the latest multi-million dollar CGC lawsuit against the New York label swapper from three days ago, not the CGC employees. Yeah. Um, well, there, they, there was two lawsuits this week, right? Or this week and last. Uh, the two employees were sued. And then the lawsuit pertaining to the original scandal has now under, has gone. They've released names in the whole nine yards. Yeah, it's going. Look, they're doing their due diligence. They're doing what they have to do to save face. They have to sue these people. They have to go to court. They've got to try to uh, try to make a man. I mean, going to court's not going to fix it all these problems, right? I, I, they've got, they, what they have to do, I think what they should do at this point now, this, they've been, they've been almost at this about a month and a half. What are you doing? And just by saying, we're going to be more attentive, we're going to be more attentive when we're grading your comic books. That's great. I'm glad you're going to be more attentive. What else? Like, what else are they going to do? They should put out, just like how CBCS reacted with some of these marketing, you know, things showing, well, this is what we do. Point, you know, bullet point, bullet point, bullet point, bullet point. This is what we do different than CGC, right? That's good for them, right? Uh, I, I, I just like uh, Swaggle Haas said, I don't think CBCS took advantage of this anywhere near where they should have. They should have, they, they could have really, this could have helped them a lot. And they, and they, they, they didn't, they just didn't do enough. I don't think they did either. I mean, they put a couple of ads out, two of their guys, not the most charismatic guys, no offense guys, <laughs> uh, went on um, a couple of YouTube channels and talked about their processes and all that. Great. Uh, wasn't enough in my opinion. And uh, CGC should kind of do the same thing, do some marketing to reassure people that they're on the case. And this is what we're going to do. There's a concrete plan as to how we are going to this will never happen again under our watch because we have learned from our mistakes and we're going to do this, 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 and this. Like concretely tell us what you're going to do. Because listen, I'm sending books in all the time. They've told me nothing. All they've done so far is reduce their price a little bit to kind of, sorry guys, sorry, you know, reduce their price a little bit. And uh, what else? They did something else. I forget. I've already forgotten. So I mean, come on guys, do more. Tell us more. So that's what I think, my, uh, Rob. Um, Rock City, in this day and age, it's Spider whoever makes the money, and I don't blame Marvel for catering to the uh, big buck supports. Of course, they're going to go where the money is. Uh, you should hold a live panel and have people debate all with you. <laughs> I could do that. I'd love to do something like that. Um, 
Did CGC ever release a list of books they thought were affected by the swapping? I got a 181. I'd like to know if it's safe or not. Yes, Mike Evans. If you go to their website, they they or their even their Facebook page, they put a list of like 350 books they feel may have been impacted by the swap. So look for that and uh, see if your your it'll have the uh, serial number on there. And if you think your book was affected, you can actually send your book in, and I think they'll inspect the book. I'm not sure if it's for free or not. I would assume it's for free, um, but yeah, there is a list out there. Uh, baby, Babe Ruth, Baby Ruth. That's for the Baby Ruth chocolate bar. Rock City, Mike Evans. Best thing you can do is get a, a Go Collect membership. That's how people figured this shit out. What are we talking? Oh, that's true. What what Rock, what Rock City is saying is he these guys pretty much got a go collect and they were comparing serial numbers and images and that's how they figured out that the the scandal they they discovered the scandal. It's crazy. Yeah, that's how it's done. Well, there you go, guys. Listen, I hope that conversation was a little fun for you. It was fun for me. I like talking about this stuff. But to answer your question, yes, I think Spider Man. Here it is, right here. The first issue of Amazing Spider-Man number one uh, started a series out in 1963, an incredibly popular series. It for sure uh, hasn't lost its 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 popularity in the last several years, since forever, in fact, since I was a kid, since this old fart was 14, 15 years old. Amazing Spider-Man number one was the series to collect, still is the series to collect. We got guys who collect just keys. We got guys who are completists. Many of you already are on on here. Said you guys collect issues in 050 to 100, or are trying to you know get your one to 50 done. Um, it, it's just a, something you want to do. It's a great it's a great series to collect, and I do believe, especially when the books are 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 of higher grade and are key books, you're certainly going to see them appreciate over time. It's just too popular a character and too popular a series otherwise. Are there other, other series you can get into? Of course there are. We all know there is. But today we're talking about Spider-Man, and that is that. Guys, my name's Kevin. I'm the comic doctor. I'm located up in Oshawa, Ontario, Canada. Like I said earlier, I'm a CGC authorized dealer. Every week I come on here and I do, I do CGC unboxings, which we just did over the last uh, 45 minutes to an hour. Every Tuesday I do that, so long as I have a box or two or three or five, and usually I do. So... Hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you do know when I go live. Every Thursday, I shouldn't say every, most Thursdays I'm on here doing a show I like to call one-on-one -on -one with me, where I uh, either talk to you one-on-one -on -one or I actually bring, lately I've been bringing guests on to talk about things that concern us as comic book fans and as comic book collectors. And uh, yeah, so hopefully you will join us then as well. This Thursday, if you haven't heard already, I have uh, Steve Borak coming on the show. He is a pioneer in the comic book industry. He was one of the founders of CGC way back, way back in the old days and was the founder of CBCS. He'll be here on Thursday to talk about us, to talk to us about all things comics and other stuff too. So I sure hope you can make it. All right, guys, thanks so much. Have a fantastic rest of your evening and we'll see you again very, very soon right here. Bye for now.